This right here is an impromptu video that I'm making and I have never ever done a video about this woman on my channel ever in life as uh, or my not so much in life. I guess you could say my life here on YouTube. I've never done one on her. So in case y'all don't know who this woman is. This is Mona Scott Young. If you do not know who Mona Scott Young is, you have to be more than familiar with what she has created. Mona Scott Young is the creator of love in hip hop. Now, I'm I'm almost certain that many of you know what love in hip hop is. She basically love in hip hop has been around for well over 10 years. I'm talking about this show has been on since I was in college and I went to college in 2007 and graduated in 2011. And I want to say that love and hip hop got started maybe towards the end of my college, my collegiate career. So we're talking more so around any time after maybe maybe from maybe 2009. So that's at the halfway point maybe going forward, but it has had so many spinoffs since then. And I think they had a love in hip hop, New York. They had a love in hip hop. I think Atlanta, I think they had a love in hip hop. I know they had a love in hip hop, Miami. So they keep constantly kept going on and on and on. And this show is on VH1. But the reason why I'm talking about this today is because many people do not know how bad this woman is for black people especially for black women because she through that show was able to put out an image of black women but black people in general but especially black women that should not have been seen as tolerable um it's thank it's, it's because of her why we have cardi b Cause that's where Cardi B got her start at was I think the love and hip hop, New York. That's how we got introduced to Cardi B. So for those of us who can't stand Cardi B, you can thank people like Mona Scott young for giving her a platform to catapult herself to where she is today. And unfortunately she can't catapult herself back to wherever it is the hell she came from, which was that strip club and so many other people. Now, when the show first came out, it was like, oh, OK, they're going to be talking about different hip hop artists that may still be in the industry now or those who were in the industry at one point, And now they're talking about their love lives with their spouses who we never really hear about and everything like that. Because I know in the very first season, I know Jim Jones and his wife, Chrissy, were the main focal point of the show. Now, that's when the show first started. It was getting its feet wet, so to speak. So there was a little bit of drama there and everything like that. And then it just started to escalate from there. This show also introduced us to K. Michelle. Now, you know, that woman has a lot of drama in her life, too. A lot. And it's crazy because she actually has a decent singing voice. But she just manages to keep drama around her all the time to the point where people became more enwrapped and more engulfed in the drama in her life than her actual singing career. But that's what the show pushed. And see, they base it around these so-called reality shows and they call it reality when all of these reality shows, for the most part, are scripted. I can't remember the last time a reality show was unscripted. A lot of people tried to make fun of Run's House, but Run's House was actually one of the more positive reality shows, even though it was clearly scripted because it just showed Rev Run's family life. You know, him, his wife, his sons and his daughters. And it was rarely ever any drama to come onto that show, which is why it was really it was a family oriented reality show, which was different for that time. But it got gobbled up by things like love and hip hop. Because when Love and Hip Hop came out, then Rev the Runs House pretty much got pushed to the back burner, like way to the back because everybody wanted the drama. But many black people and I say black people because this is who I'm talking to, because this is who her mo most of the audience is when it comes to her. 
Many black people do not even know who this woman is. I posted up something on my Twitter account today and and one I had a uh, someone who is subscribed to me said they never even heard of her. Another black woman didn't never heard of her. They heard of Love and Hip Hop, but they never heard of Mona Scott Young. See, when they think of Love and Hip Hop, they only think of the cast members on the show and what network it airs on, but they don't know who brought the idea to VH1. She is the showrunner. I'm not sure if she's still the showrunner now, but I know she was the showrunner for a very long time, and she very much still might be. I actually looked up her net worth. This woman's net worth is $30 million. This woman has a network of $30 million, and most of it came from having ratchet television on weekly on VH1. Now, I want to say she has additional shows. I can't don't quote me on that, but we know love and hip hop is her bread and butter. And I'm talking about the whole loaf of bread and the whole carton of butter. For years, people have been trying their best to get this show off of the air for years. We've people have had petitions. People have written to the network, but they cannot beat the ratings that the, the, that the show draws and it's mainly black women that keep supporting this show every single week. And then you had other shows that came out that tried to do their own thing off of the love and hip hop brand. You had shows that came out like, what was it? Like real housewives of Atlanta, even though they have their own thing. But when it came to the real housewives of Atlanta, it was mainly a black female cast for that show. And that's the one that's the most popular, the one that's most talked about, which is another toxic show that's been on for for way too long. That show has been on around the same time as this show. Then you had like, you know, the Black Ink Crew. Then they had Black Ink Crew Chicago. Like all of those shows fed off of the formula that she created. Like whenever you watch a lot of these re- so-called reality shows, they look and sound the same as a love and hip hop because they got the formula from her. And now it's just completely spiraled out of control. But one of the main reasons why I'm bringing this up is because you have a lot of black women that love to say that black men are this or black men are the problem or black men are doing this. And that's why we're not getting anywhere and stuff like that. While they're simultaneously supporting this woman every week who has bought you ratchetry and made it mainstream. I'm going to say that again. Mona Scott Young brought ratchetry from the underground and helped make it mainstream. I'm not saying that she completely did it, but she had a hand in it. She had a foot in it. And yes, you don't need to adjust your screen. Mona Scott Young is a black woman. Now, many are going to say, well, think of all the rappers and the the ones who like to exploit women and everything like that. I remember there was a time when black women had complained that they didn't want to be in hip hop videos anymore because they felt it was disrespectful to them. The rappers decided, "Okay, fine, we won't put you in our videos anymore. So what did they do? They started going and getting the quote unquote exotic woman, your, you know, your, your quote unquote mixed woman, your Asians, your Latinas. Your your Indians, you know, all of the ones that many black women claim to not like, but a lot of them choose to emulate, especially on these shows. And what ended up happening? They came and did a beeline back around and saying, well, why are you discriminating, discriminating against women? Why are you discriminating, discriminating against dark skinned women and not putting us in our videos? Didn't you just tell them that you didn't want to be in it because you felt like you were being disrespected? They were honoring your wishes. You can't have your cake and eat it, too. I remember that whole period. It happened more toward it was like the early 2000s, somewhere around that time. Which is exactly why a lot of black female hip hop artists started to emerge. So they could uh, basically a lot of the black female hip hop artists of today. And I'm talking about of today, not back then, are nothing more than, quote unquote, video vixens that. Uh, got rejected from a video shoot with another rapper. I mean, look at who we got out. Was it Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion? If this was years ago, Megan Thee Stallion and Cardi B would not be in the spotlight like that. They would be somewhere in the background shaking their ass. I'm just keeping it real. 
But see, when Lil' Kim came out, she changed the whole look of the female hip-hop artist. But the thing is, Lil' Kim didn't come out heavy like that and she still had bars she still had talent and still can wrap circles around many of these so-called female hip-hop artists of today she has a she has an array of self-hate issues granted but she was a true hip-hop artist of her time a lot of the ones that are out today i don't know what you can really call that i just found out that that Doja Cat chick, the self-hater, that at the American Music Awards, she won an award for favorite soul R&B artist or album or whatever. I'm like, what R&B song did this woman make? Because I've never listened to any of her music, but based on the people who do, they said she's more of a pop artist. And, they, and when I looked at the nominees, they said that she was up against Janae Aiko and Summer Walker, two women who actually do R&B, and she beat them. So, yeah, it, it's a weird trajectory that we're in. I know I kind of went off a little bit, but I had to, like, branch off a little bit to bring it back to this point. Mona Scott Young, if y'all want to be up to black women out there, if you want to really be upset about why your image looks tarnished the way that it does, look no further than her. Because for the last 10 plus years, Thanks to her show or her shows. That's why your image looks the way that it does, because uh, they know a lot of people watch that show. And it's not only black people that watch that show. It's white people who watch that show. What do you think they get? What do you think a lot of white people or PC individuals learn their so-called lingo? They watch shows like that. And then all you got to do is if you watch the show and you listen to stuff, they said it like, wait a minute. I heard someone so said it on this show. I didn't know you watched it. Don't think for one second that just because they're PC that they do not watch the stuff that we watch. A lot of the times they're doing it because they're trying to find out how to study you. I remember it was years ago when T.I. was being interviewed and they had asked him what was one of his favorite shows to watch. And he said friends. And I was like, that's interesting. What made T.I. say that he liked watching Friends? And he said he watches Friends because he wanted to see what white people were like when they get off work. What are they like? What are they like? Because and I said, oh, interesting. An interesting way to put it. But uh, but, you know, like I said, with Love and Hip Hop, it started off with mainly just black people. But now I notice they started to diversify the cast a little bit. But what they do is they'll put another ratchet person on there of another group like Cardi B. But they that person that they put on there, they push them more to the black market, so to speak. And when I say the black market, I'm talking about black people because they, keep, you know, they always shove Cardi B at us. They don't, they, Cardi B doesn't get shoved to white people, even though we know she got white fans. But all I'm saying is this, if y'all really are upset about the way your image looks, the woman on your screen has a huge role to play when it comes to that. And there's been plenty of opportunities where the, her operation, her show could have been shut down, but they haven't and they're still on. And now all of those people on those shows now have a platform. And it looks like they may not be going anywhere anytime soon. If at all. Love and hip hop at this point, it can go off the air, but the people and the toxicity that came from it is still going to be lingering in the air. Unfortunately. Like I said, this show should have been canceled years ago. But everybody liked to be entertained. People like to watch them fight. People like to see them cuss and throw drinks and pull hair and yell all over the place, acting like children, acting like grown ass children. Meanwhile, Mona Scott Young was sitting back with her popcorn and drink in hand while the ratings rose and so did her bank account. The ratings went up and so did her coin. Because I tell you this, her net worth was not $30 million dollars back when the show first started but it is now she's about, she's living better than all the people on, the, on that show she's like a puppet master and they never and the thing is 
She's never on the show. The only time she really ever makes an appearance is it may be if she feels like it is at the reunion special that they have when the show season ends. And she might do an interview here and there, but after that, she gets ghosts. That's why many people don't know who she is. But yes, y'all just got a glimpse into who Mona Scott Young is and why she's not good. She's not good at all. But y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments and I'll talk to you in the next one.